Hello and welcome to Debonair Production Sports. I'm your host, Nicole R. Hughes. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Virgil Hunter, who just trains professional boxers. One of his main clients is middleweight champion, Andre Board. Welcome, Mr. Hunter. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> so glad to have you today. Um, so I read that you're one of the hottest trainers in boxing. And not to mention, you were voted trainer of the year, I don't know, about a year and a half ago or something. How does that make you feel? Well, it's humbling. Um, you, know, you work hard in the sport and you get your accolades and things like that. And certainly you, you realize in sports you, you have peaks and valleys, highs and lows. So you better not get too comfortable with self accolades, right. but it's humbling. I'm grateful to the people and those who voted for me. And but I couldn't do it without the fighters. So, you know, a lot of credit goes to them, too. That's right. It's very much of an honor. So tell me how long have you been training? Oh, it's close, probably right at 30 years now. Wow, yeah, 30 quite years. quite a while. You started off boxing. Tell me about the transition. You, you were boxing for several years and then you ended. Why did you stop boxing? Well, boxing was just one of the many sports that I participated in. I was a college basketball player, also was a baseball player. Mm -hmm. So boxing was a given through my family, my father, my grandfather, and my uncles. It was just something that we did as a family, uh, pretty much all the males. And, and uh, my interest started uh, as a child, you know, seven years old. I can remember being with all my uncles and grandfathers watching Friday night fights and things like that. And of course, with a lot of cousins and second cousins and people in the neighborhood, you have to put the gloves on all the mm -hmm. time. So then that tran that goes into higher levels of competition. So it was just one of the main things, I, mm -hmm. uh, many things that I did. But it was, uh, as far as coaching, it was my favorite. Right. Mm -hmm. So th tell me how you became a, a trainer. How did um, you get into it? Indirectly, working for the probation department. Um, started feeling sorry for young kids going to prison, mm. you know, and trying to give them some sort of way and means to protect themselves. Right. Uh, and then I like to teach, so it, uh, it started there and it just carried over. Yeah, and you worked with juvenile kids for several years and then you retired. Tell me about what, you know, tell me about your transition. What, what inspired that transition? Well, it was way more than several years. You know, it was <laughs> several, several. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like thirty years. Yeah, okay. thirty years of working with kids. Working and, with. Um, and you retired. I retired from Alameda County Probation Department mm -hmm. in two thousand and six. Um, it was time to retire. I'd done my time and, and put everything on the books, so it was a good time to retire. Being that boxing was available to me and it enabled me to put all my time and effort into what I truly love. Mm -hmm. So not too many of us get to do what we truly love in life um, and have all the avenues open to you to do it. I'm right. fortunate to have that. So it was time to put the energy into myself, which I did. Right, mm -hmm. that's great. Do you have any regrets? Such as? I mean, you were working with these children for so long and now you're, you're, you're focused on training. Do you have any regrets of retiring from working with the children? Well, you know, the scripture says there's a time and a season for everything. And my season at working with kids who are incarcerated mm -hmm. is over. Yeah. But as far as working with young men, it's still going on. Right. So the vehicle just happens to be boxing. Right, um, that's right. So that never stopped. It just went into a different uh, avenue and arena, so to speak. So, right. But as far as working with incarcerated kids, that's, that's over with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell me what makes a good trainer? You have to be observant. Uh, you have to recognize talent. But I think more than anything, you have to be in tune to character. You have to be in tune to mm -hmm. um, dispositions and temperament because without that, uh, it won't be success anyway. Right. So you, you have to definitely be in tune with those and you have to be willing to, to suffer. You know, you have to be able to suffer through the tough times mm -hmm. and the rough times and um, you have to be able to hold up because when they see you hold up, they follow in those footsteps, so to speak, and they begin to hold up too. That's right, mm -hmm. that's good. So what are the steps that one needs to take to become a boxer? Well, it's. It's probably the only sport in the world that you don't go recruiting 
athletes, boxers find you. Yeah. Because uh, you know, a man wasn't made to hit another man and then let another <laughs> man hit him. So it has to be in their blood, so to speak. It's uh, just yeah. a different type of athlete that wants to box. Right. So they usually find you for whatever reason. And it's not just a poor man's sport or a uh, ghetto sport. It's a sport for everybody. It's, um, it just depends on the man, usually a person who likes to compete but might not be really in tune to team sports. Mm -hmm. They more gra they gravitate towards individual sports, such as even with tennis or a sprinter or a, uh, some of the sports that call for a, the athlete to depend on himself. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing in boxing. So they, 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 they have a different temperament. They cut out different for mm -hmm. sure, but they right. find you, you don't find them. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I was reading something online and I don't know if you're, if you'll remember this, but it, it said that one day, mostly by accident, his calling was answered. Does that ring a bell to you? Are you able to elaborate on what that means by one day by accident, your calling was answered? Uh, did I make that statement? Uh, it was in quotations. From me or someone no, else? No, it was from someone else. So I'm just wondering. Well, you know what? There's so many quotations from <laughs> other people. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not familiar You're with it. You're not familiar it. with no, that? Um, I'd have to really be refreshed. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to say it's not relevant. But, yeah, yeah. But it was I'd probably a while ago. It could have been. You just need to refresh your memory. Yeah. It's okay. No mm -hmm. problem. So um, tell me about some of the challenges that you deal with um, just being a trainer in general. Well, you, you're sending young men off to war, you know, and, and you're sending them in danger. You're in a sport where, you know, they can get killed. And uh, it, yeah. it's, it's very important to, to really, you know, understand what you're into and what you're up against. And you, you have to continue to learn this sport every day. Mm -hmm. You have to put your time in every day. You can't never sit down on the sport. And you have to be aware of what's out there to, from the competition to the business end of it so it's, it covers the whole spectrum so you have to be pretty well rounded because you know you're the closest thing that they have uh, when they step in the ring right. so you want to make sure that you're worthy of that mm -hmm. it depends on you a lot <laughs> depends on the coach yes so tell me how you keep your fighters focused uh, just kick them <laughs> 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 no, you know Shove what? around a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm blessed to have great fighters here. So they've learned focus a long time mm -hmm. ago. They, they wouldn't even be here where they are today mm -hmm. if they hadn't had focus. So that's the last thing. Um, now they're professionals, so they know the procedure and getting ready, and they know it's up to me to implement different plans and strategies for them to win a fight and also to be able to troubleshoot some of the deficiencies that they might have to make them better. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a daily job and you yeah. give it daily thought and it consumes quite a bit of your time. Mm -hmm. But again, I could be off doing something else instead right. of what I love. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, health and fitness is obviously important to you being a trainer and, and to your, your boxers as well. How do you you know, make sure that they're, besides they're working out, how do you make sure they're eating properly? Or do you, you know, are you like over that? Do you mm. just kind of let them deal with what they're supposed to eat? Or do you control what they eat? Or tell them what they're supposed to eat to keep their bodies in shape? Well, by them being professionals, I don't control what they eat, but I definitely <laughs> suggest to them what they should eat. Uh -huh. And I mean, you're talking about Olympian athletes here right. and world-class athletes, mm -hmm. you know, ranked in the world. So they know the ABCs of being successful in their sport and they know that uh, diet and nutrition and all these things are a part of it. So with the exception of maybe uh, some of the new things that come Around, uh, that come every year, that show up every year, some of the new, new nutritional uh, supplements maybe they might have or different uh, strategies, physical fitness strategies and everything, you know, which I stay abreast of. Mm -hmm. Things are constantly changing and evolving. Um, you know, they're pretty much on, on cue with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to close here, but I just wanted to mention you've been working with Andre since he was young. Uh, 
just real quick, how would you say he's improved over the years? Well, his dedication has taken him to the pinnacle of the sport. Uh, and he's, uh, his desire, his determination to win, his will to win, and um, putting in his time, putting in his work, um, practicing, being dedicated to his craft, that's what's improved him over the years. So, and improved all these young men. So Great. we're fortunate. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you so You're much welcome. for your time. I'm Nicole Hughes with Debonair Productions Sports, and we'll see you next time.